Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil and I am here with our good friend Vera and uh, we just got together today, we were spending time just talking about things that we've been hearing from the Lord and uh, just things that are going on in the world right now and uh, we just decided to do a real quick video, we just wanted to share a few things with you uh, that the Lord has, has been giving us, I, I think these things will encourage you. Uh, so, Vera shared a word she was given just not too long ago from the Lord. Okay, this was, uh, actually it was yesterday, and I've been kind of getting the same message from the Lord that uh, we're living in a day and age that we need to live on a higher plane. Amen. And so, uh, I've been given several of those words, but this is what the Lord gave me on the, uh, the 12th. Arise, my child, keep your eyes open and live in the heavenly realm. In this world, you will continue to see lies, deception, and evil at work. It's everywhere. It almost seems like all is evil. But I have a group of people that strive to live above it all. Uh, you have the advantage living here. You can see things clearly. You can see things as I see them. You can't live down here anymore. There is too much to pollute you. Your eyes, your ears, your hearts will become clouded. You must hold your head above it, and I will see you through. Don't get discouraged. Worship with the angels. Mm -hmm. Don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Bring your cares to me. Feed on my word, and let me be your joy. You are right to believe I am returning soon. Amen. As you see the tide okay. turn, as you see evil on the increase in high places, just hold on and live higher. It will be okay. I will come to your rescue. I will lift you up, 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 and away. Praise God. For everything there is a purpose. My plan will unfold, but my plan for you is good. Amen. Praise God. He's got a plan. He does. And it reminded me of another word that he gave me not too long ago. He mm -hmm. said that I, it was the same thing. I have a plan for you. It's a good plan. It's a perfect Amen. plan. And I don't have a plan B. Right. So I think that's our hope. Don't and have a plan B. I love that. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I think in these times we, we can't cast away our confidence. No. We have to hold on to his word. Hold on to the hope. Yeah, that we Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Well, and that um, kind of went along with something that the Lord had shown me. Um, my husband and I were spending time in prayer and worship, and um, I heard, like, in my spirit, the words, of me, my children. And then I saw what looked like a man, uh, his legs, he's wearing jeans and work boots, like a worker, and he was crawling under a bed, okay? So then, um, I can't remember when I had the dream, not too long from that, that time that I saw the vision and heard the word, but... In this dream, now my sister who always represents like the, um, the apostate or the lukewarm church was uh, walking next to me, but she was elevated like, you know, above me on a ledge and we were walking parallel, but she was very angry with me and she was lashing out at me. But so she mm -hmm. lashed, the first time she lashed out, now I had like either, it was Jesus, either Jesus or an angel walking next to me. I think it was an angel, but she would lash out and she got hurt. All right, and then she would get really frustrated. And we walked a little further, and she went to lash out again, and she tripped, and she got hurt. I mean, she really got injured. And so finally, you know, I said to her kind of sarcastically, keep it up, Michelle. Like, when are you going to learn your lesson? Stop attacking, okay? Mm. And so I felt that, like, all the word, the vision, and that dream all went together, all right? That what we have going on is... It's from the Lord. He's like saying, this is of me, my children. Like the church is closing their doors. This is of me. And through this, the panic and the fear, some of the workers are going under the bed. They're hiding, all mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. others, what we see like in my dream, are people getting angry and frustrated, you know, with the lukewarm getting angry with um, the remnant church and, and attacking the remnant uh, mm -hmm. and, and just becoming more and more frustrated, but unfortunately doesn't seem to be learning their lesson, all right? And this is important because uh, as we were talking, Vera had mentioned the scripture uh, in Hebrews where the apostle Paul was encouraging them 
you know, to accept discipline from the Lord, to be teachable. You know, if you go to Hebrews chapter 12, <clears throat> in verses uh, four through six, it says this, and you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. And he scourges every son whom he receives. And then down in verse 11, it goes on to say, All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So it's so important um, as we are going through these hard times, first of all, to recognize that the Lord is in charge. He is sovereign. Nothing's happening without his permission. And if it's happening in your life, okay, he is still in control. So he's allowing it. And so maybe we need to just stop and, and take a look at our own attitudes and just see, are we teachable or are we resisting the Lord, if we're getting angry with other brothers and sisters in Christ, lashing out at them, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, we have to recognize that the Lord is at work in all of this, all right? And we need to yield ourselves uh, to whatever it is that he is trying to do in the church, okay, and in us during this time. Mm -hmm. I think that's just really important. I think so. I think it is, too, to stay united. I think that's yeah. what he uh, wants us to do. And that correctable spirit is something that the Lord's always um, laid on my heart because I, you know, I teach a lot. And, um, yep. but to have that correctable spirit that we are able to be taught, right. uh, to otherwise we're in a spirit of rebellion. That's if true. We can't be taught. And so, uh, that's a very dangerous mm -hmm. thing. You know, in Proverbs, it also talks about that, uh, the Lord disciplines those he loves as a mm. father, uh, yep. does his son in whom he delights. Amen. You know, so if we're not correctable, right. then, you know, that, that's a bad thing. You know, we need to, to be correctable, allow the Holy Spirit to correct us, because if we don't see our wrongs, then there's no repentance that makes it right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, yeah, it's important for us to just, you know, be checking our own attitudes through all of this. And I know with being restricted from doing things, being at home, uh, yeah, it could be it could be easy to get frustrated cranky. and cranky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, that's all us and God. We have to just go to him and, uh, and let him work in us and work out of us anything that, that either should be there or shouldn't be there. Uh, so mm -hmm. I encourage you to do that. Take that time with him. Uh, don't, don't hide under the bed. Okay, he did not, God did not call us to a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound, sound mind. mind. And so I, I hope and pray everybody's walking in that. Uh, is there anything else that you felt led to share, Vera? No, I no? think that covers what we talked about. Okay, that about covers it then. All right, yeah. then, as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love you all.